Hello, yes. chat. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first cover reveal in the Misplaced Adventures universe. We're so excited. So glad you could be here. So, uh, yes, we're so glad to see Jess Rainey here. She's going to be next with this adventure, so it's nice to see her. And we've got Greg on. Welcome, Greg. Thank you for coming to support. And Zafo, of course, he has to be here. And Avatar fans here. Hey, good to see you, Airbender. Good to see you. Yes, it's we have a very contract. fun cover reveal. What, Zafo? I have to be here. It's in my contract. It's in your contract. That's right. That's right. It's required. I keep saying I'm going to, like, you know, dock his pay or double his pay, and he laughs at me. Hmm. Yeah. Someday. Someday I'll pay you. All right. I cook dinner. Does that count? Does that count as pay? What do you think, Molly? Jen, does that count? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. I'd say so. <laughs> I think that counts. Other work. You work. That's right. And then we all work for each other. <laughs> That's right. We're working for the same goal that will someday pay off, supposedly, they say. <laughs> uh, but what it does do is introduce us to awesome people like you two. So um, thank you, everyone, for coming. We are here to do the cover reveal for One Good Eye. It is the first book in the uh, Heady Stormheart series, which is part of the Misplaced Adventures universe so we are so excited for this anyone who is a fan of the misplaced mercenaries by kevin petway this is the same world um it just takes place this specific series takes place a few hundred years earlier is that right jen how, how much earlier yes 400 years earlier there you go so about 400 years earlier and if any of y'all knew about the sea witch if you remember her story and her little part we don't i'm sorry oh the deep witch yes sorry the deep witch um, yes, yeah, so if you remember the deep, see, look, the author knows the work. Isn't that impressive? You should all be very impressed. The deep witch started with the deep witch, and then I made her the, the island witch. So there you go. Well, it was years ago, you know, things happen. Um, but yeah, so centuries, no less, which you know, gives a little hint to everyone who's interested, but it's a lot of fun. But so thank you so much for coming out. This is going to be really fun. We can't wait for you to see the cover. We were so lucky to find Molly. So hopefully Molly is going to have fun and I should probably do your formal introductions. So people know who you are. What do you think? You want to try that? Just this once, just for fun. I had everything organized, so I wouldn't struggle. So here we go. So I first would like to introduce you to the author of One Good Eye. That is Jen Bear. She is wait, wait, an wait, Air wait, Force wait, brat, wait, 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 Army wait. veteran. I, I have to push buttons manually. You have to give me more time than that. I don't know what buttons you're pushing. Uh, to record. I don't know why you weren't recording as soon as we went live. Uh -oh. It's fire. going to Twitch, but... Anyway. All fine. right. Well, tell me when you're recording, and then I will do the re-intro with the book again. And it won't even be so struggling. It'll be almost like we're professionals and stuff. <laughs> All right. Can you – you can see me? Can I count it down on the camera for you? I cannot see you because I have other stuff up, so I don't have to struggle with it later. Ah. Okay. Just count um, three in a rhythm, and I will count – I will start talking on six. Okay. One, two – Three. Hello, welcome readers. We are here today for the very special cover reveal of One Good Eye, the first book in the Hetty Stormheart series, which is also happens to be the first series in the new Misplaced Adventures universe. So everyone who is a fan of Misplaced Mercenaries by Kevin Petway, this takes place in the same world. So you are in for a treat because we have roped in some um, very talented authors to bring this world more to life. All those little corners that one author couldn't get to, we are going to explore them all. And this first one is by Jen Bear. Hi, Jen. Hey. Hey. Excellent. We are so happy to have you. Jen Bear is an Air Force brat, Army veteran, and military wife. She loves traveling with her family to foreign places, real or imaginary, whenever she can. Her family is her life. Her writing is her passion. You can find her published works at jenbear.com. So we were so lucky to have you. I'm so glad you're here, Jen. And of course, we're also doing the cover reveal. So we were lucky enough to get the cover artist on board so she can tell you where she came up with her brilliant ideas. Hey, Molly, how are you this evening, afternoon? Hi. <laughs> Good. It's evening for you, evening. right? 
It's nine o'clock here. Yeah, it's quite see, late. See, see, evening was correct. I totally knew what I was talking about. <laughs> so Molly Phipps is the owner of We Got You Covered Book Design. She specializes in book covers and interior design, bringing quality products to authors at affordable prices, offering unique work in all genres, as well as additional services such as branding and website design. Uh, we Got You Covered aims to make the publishing process easy by being a one-step shop for all your book-related needs, which is awesome because we've signed Molly up to do all the covers in Yay! these uh, misplaced at adventures series so it'll be fun so you'll be getting to see molly a lot so now that we have our excellent people on board um jen how did you get roped into this misplaced adventures craziness <laughs> i think you should be telling that story because you're the one that wrote me into it but i've no i'm completely innocent no idea what you're talking about so i wrote some short stories and submitted them to cursed dragon ships um uh, annual anthologies and Kelly seemed to enjoy my work. And so she, a lot. Kevin Petway had a series out that he was going to stand on and they were going to have a few authors they invited to come right in his world. Um, and so I, I maybe fangirled a bit about over that because I was super excited to be able to work in this universe with Kevin Petway because his books are fun. Um, and Kelly's just amazing to work with. So, uh, Aww. I, I put my hat in there and said, hey, if you if you want me, I'm 100 percent in. And so, yep, uh, I ended up getting getting the tap on the shoulder to join this world and jumped at the chance. So, yeah, I jumped at it so fast. I get to be the first book in the expanded universe, which I'm super, super excited about. No doubt. We were like, what order should we release, release these in? And Jen was like, mine's already done. We're like, Jen's first. <laughs> It was pretty impressive, let me tell you. Um, well, we are so glad we rubbed you into this um, because the this book is incredible. And to give you a taste, I think we should not torture people any longer and go ahead and reveal that cover. So let's see that beautiful cover. Let's see Molly's good work. Molly did a fabulous job with this. Oh, I'm glad she you really like it. Did. Yay, look at that beautiful. Wonderful, wonderful. So excited by that whole cover. Um, it's good. I We've got a bit to talk about on the cover. But before we do, as everyone gazes in awe at that gorgeousness, I want to read the back cover copy so everyone can have a little bit of idea of what's going on. And don't forget, if you have questions, please put them in chat, like always. So, taking over an island nation of pirates should be easy for Hetty Stormheart, first daughter of the merciless island witch. But leading her coven of 27 siblings who can't agree on anything is like herding drunken cliff pigs. When a foreign diplomat warns of an invading lord threatening their way of life, Hetty's got to whip her sisters into fighting shape to defend their home. Only the invading army is unlike anything they've ever seen. Beasts like men and amphibious assassins who can swim circles around them. To make matters worse, Hetty's only hope of victory is a cursed magical artifact. Daryl, a sentient eyeball who hates magic wielders and is more annoying than all her siblings combined. But as Hetty struggles to keep her ragtag group of defenders together, a new adversary emerges, one more ruthless and unexpected than even the shadow beasts that hunt them in the dark. With Daryl's help, Hetty must overcome the invading army and protect her home from those who seek to destroy it. The true cost of victory may be higher than she ever imagined, and the fate of the island nation and the daughter's coven hangs in the balance. Yeah, I just love it. And I, I was very lucky enough to get to read it since I was the proofreader on this baby and she was pretty exciting. And I'm wondering, Jen, how did you um, come up with Hetty? Where'd she come from? Um, well, I was reading over Kevin's books because I wanted to jump into this world and he had the Deep Witch um, mm -hmm. books and he kind of barely skimmed the surface on the Deep Witch. She's right a super powerful woman and I thought you know what let's back this up 400 years because I don't know what everybody else is writing yet because I was the first one writing and I didn't want to step on toes so I said let's back it up about 400 years and mm -hmm. we'll um, come up with like an origin story for the deep witch um, she has a bunch of daughters in Kevin's book so I, I made it her very first daughter was going to be telling the story of her being raised by the deep witch and she's being mm -hmm. take over for the deep witch on the island um, and everything goes sideways, like it always does. Um, well, otherwise, what are we talking about, right? Yeah. Hetty Stormheart is her first daughter. So, yep. Excellent, excellent. 
So, so exciting. We love Hetty. Well, I love Hetty anyways, especially once Daryl comes along. So we'll talk about Daryl too. Wonderful. <laughs> I love Daryl. It's like, I, I laughed when I was reading. It was like Hetty was trying to find herself and then finding Daryl. It's like suddenly she knew who she was, but we'll talk about that in a minute. What I do want to know is Molly, we sent, I sent some samples because this is humorous fantasy, right? It's sword and sorcery. It's not taken too seriously, um, except the parts that are. Um, but humor is, a, is an integral part of the story. So we wanted the right cover, but the cover could be silly, but we didn't want like this intricate drawn, like, you know, I love the Dragonlance covers and all that kind of stuff, but it's a little different now electronically. So I'm like, here's some samples and we want it purple. Go. Oh! Um, <laughs> so what, what, what did you, what did you pull from? Like what, how did you decide to make this happen? So the samples you sent were really great because it was very clear what you were looking for in terms of an overall style. And I personally really love covers with silhouettes on them. I think they're actually one of the cover styles I'm best at. Um, and I specifically really liked about what you were looking for was all that play on negative space. So I really wanted to utilize that in terms of the depth, which is why we have like the, as the title hits the sun, it changes to white. And when the bird wings overlay the title, they go white as well. And it just, it just helps give depth where there otherwise isn't a lot because mm -hmm. it's just three colors, but um, it was a lot of fun. And I love anything having to do with pirates. So I was quite, quite excited about that. I was initially trying to put Daryl on there. Cause I was like, I was going to make him the O like this little like floating eyeball. <laughs> and then when you said, we don't want him on the cover. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> well, darn. <laughs> That's right. He can be featured on the next cover. We're all good. We've got books coming. <laughs> 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 Awesome. No, I love you. You did a great job. And I have to say, we, we came up, we like had two comments. And one of them yeah, Jen, was that you wanted the seagull changed, right? Yeah. What did you want the seagull changed to, Jen? Seagull changed to a big old hawk because Hetty has a gigantic hawk as her, um, as her companion, uh, sort of like a pet, but really more of a, a friend that's smarter than the average bird. Um, and he's called a serpent killer. He's really cool. I liked him. So Molly, I'm like, can we have a hawk? Were you like, a what? <laughs> Why do you want this? <laughs> no, like... I was, I mean, again, it goes back to playing with that sort of depth and scale. And when you mentioned wanting like a really big bird, I was like, well, this is a great way to show because you have the seagulls and it, it just, it, I thought it added a really cool sort of balance to the cover in terms of drawing the eye to different places. And no, yeah, I mean, I am one of these people who, if you want something crazy on a cover, I'm like, even if it's super outlandish, I'm like, I will find a way to make it happen because it's more of like a matter of pride for me at that point. I'm like, I want to know I can, I can do this. <laughs> so uh -oh, when you wait. said, you know, a hawk with like a lion mane, <laughs> I was like, well, it's making sure that that you can tell that that's what's happening in a silhouette. So but I was quite pleased with that we came out. Yeah, it works pretty darn well. Yeah, I forgot I even asked for that and you did. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> you see, careful though. You said you like things being outlandish. I mean, this is the wrong company to, to actually offer that where we're recording and we now have proof. Um, but that's cool. So I'm glad. I'm so glad we found you. It's so nice. You oh, never know, right? You. you go through some cover artists like, mm, I don't know if this is going to work. And we try not to be too mean. I hope we weren't too mean to you. No, I mean, I'll be honest with you. When I first started doing it, Mm -hmm. my um I don't think in I don't remember what the word for it is but I don't think in words I think in pictures so whenever okay. I get like a cover prompt I mm -hmm. know pretty much straight away what I want to do but it's then finding things that will work into what I want to make so I was getting really frustrated at first because I wasn't really finding anything that was like gelling quite the way I wanted and I was just like oh god they're gonna think I'm taking forever <laughs> so then when I finally did kind of find stuff that I, I really liked how it looked all together and sent it your way. I was I was quite pleased with the reaction. So that was nice. Yeah. Well, it worked because we were quite pleased. <laughs> I was pleased with what you did with the purple because I know I originally had said um, I, I would like her to have like an orange sunset background. And then Kelly decided in a brilliant um, marketing tactic that everybody should have their own cover color. Mm -hmm. uh, so my color was assigned to be purple. And I was like, oh, I don't know how that's going to work. Like, we're going to have a purple sun or what? Um, it, but it turned out beautifully. It did. Mm -hmm. So all my books will be purple. Yes. 
Yeah, so that is the deciding factor. That's awesome, which I did want to also talk because I didn't think about what to put, what to tie it together, you know, so it's all the same series. I mean, they're all the same world, but it's different series. But I love the the misplaced adventures over the top like that. Mm -hmm. So are you going to be able to, Molly, you think, put that in all the all the? Oh, books? absolutely. Well, it was such a great logo. I was like, I ne it needs to be sort of, you know, you have these really famous books like Harry Potter and stuff that that's like their focal point, that series name. And the right. logo for this series was just so eye catching that I was like, it needs to be there in a really prominent way. So I thought, you know, adding that scroll to it, making it look almost like piratey worked really well in terms of framing the cover. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And that, that misplaced adventures logo that was made by Lena Shore. So she yes, is lovely. Quite, quite talented. <clears throat> excuse me yeah she did like our logo for our company and she's amazing so that that was all her work um so perfect perfect i love it um and we should probably not torture people any longer because i did tease that we have an incredible sample of the book that jen is going to read for us so jen are you ready to read i am and i picked something that has daryl in it yay <laughs> Peace to everyone. I'm not an audiobook narrator, so this is not my. Okay. Hopefully, Daryl. Okay. I'm on on the parapets of the castle where they're fighting. You are in danger, Daryl said loud enough to be heard over the clashing steel. I know that, damn it, Petty shouted back. The soldiers had finally made it over the wall in pockets, and she couldn't concentrate on her magic while she swung her sword and dodged blades from multiple directions. The three men fighting her would have taken her down if they'd used skill instead of blindly hacking away at anything they could reach. Servants trickled buckets of water down the walls where Mar stood ready. She guided the water covering the wall in a thin sheet, then froze it solid. The soldiers halfway up the wall lost their grip, slipping comically fast to land atop those beneath. Some had their fingers stuck fast. They dangled until their fingertips ripped free of their finger bones or their finger bones broke. The heat of the day had warmed the stones, so the ice melted each time Mar moved to a new section of wall. There were always more soldiers and more walls, though. She couldn't possibly cover the entire castle in ice. Petty used her magic to seek out those below who were holding up others. No matter how many times she knocked them down, they got back up and climbed over one another. Her sisters would run out of magic before Lord Vitson ran out of soldiers. Surprisingly resilient and positively feral, the men didn't speak beyond huffing growls. Wild eyes rolling, they stabbed at anything and everything, including their fellow soldiers. It was ludicrous and terrifying. In response, the daughters, had become a vicious, deadly force. Hetty's noble stance on helping Cedrios had been a special kind of stupid. They'd be lucky if they survived the day. Jonathan had been working his way over to her, but he stopped a few paces away to fend off two crazed swordsmen. Hetty dodged another manic thrust. On your left, Daryl shouted. Shut up, you completely useless sack of flesh, she growled, stabbing the soldier in the gut. The soldier didn't seem to notice because his ally's wild backswing aimed at Jonathan slit the soldier's throat from the side and he toppled over the edge of the wall. I didn't say anything, Jonathan said, dispatching his, attack his attacker. He was breathing hard and blood spattered his white shirt. He was glowing less than most, which meant he hadn't eaten as much stew. She shouldn't have taken his bread away. She should have taken his bread away at lunch. Then obviously I wasn't talking to you, Hetty snapped. She could hear the clang of metal on metal and the growls and grunts of men. The sounds punctuated by the occasional thud of bodies hitting the ground. Duck, Daryl sang out, his voice in her head clear despite the clamor. He seemed to take a lot of pleasure in the violence around him. Registering Jonathan's widening eyes as he saw the blade swinging from behind her. It zipped over her head and lodged between two stones in the wall. She flipped her sword so it pointed behind her, stepped back, and buried it in the man's guts. He leaned forward and bit her upper arm, and she swore loudly. You really need to stop stabbing them in the gut. Killing blows only, Daryl advised. Hetty jerked away from the gnashing teeth and sent an elbow into the soldier's nose, snapping his head back. Daryl was right once again, and it irritated her like a boot full of sand in the eye. She spun around to jam the rigid inside of her hand into the soldier's throat. When he stumbled against the low wall, she bent and yanked his feet up, 
Over he went, taking a man climbing up the wall with him. Jonathan stood with his mouth open, hands reaching out uselessly to help her. Did you need something, she asked, taking a moment to breathe. She knew her respite wouldn't last long. Already, more men were clambering over the side of the wall. Where did you learn to fight like that? She shrugged. Outlaws. You fought outlaws, he said, eyebrows raised. No, they gave me lessons. So you're going to have to read it yourself if you want to figure out why the, the men are glowing. That's a whole... <laughs> a fun story. It is. No, I, I think it's it's funny. I love Daryl offers that because notice there's a lot of um, battle grossness in here because, you know, that's part of sword and sorcery. But Daryl gives that nice little comic to it, even though, if anything, he's the darkest of it all. Like, did you put Daryl in there on purpose for comic relief or did that just happen naturally? Just that just became him. He was supposed to be a jerk and he ended up being pretty funny. So <laughs> he ends up he ends up doing a lot of heckling from the sidelines. <laughs> That, that didn't didn't catch Daryl is the sentient eyeball and he talks to Hetty in her head so nobody else can hear him. Um, so he just stands around making snide comments a lot or hangs around because she wears them in a pouch on her neck. But I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Hecklers for the win. That's right. Jess might know a little bit about that. Her and Greg and their bees. That's right. She would actually. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put the link up now. Um, the link is for the pre-order. So if you would like to sign up right now, and make sure you don't miss the launch. Um, One Good Eye pre-order is up right there. So thanks, Northern Lights. I'm glad you love the cover. And welcome, Lahia. She came in a little bit late, so we're so glad to see you here. Um, so we have uh, the pre-orders up. So I just linked that. If you would like to pre-order, we would appreciate it. Um, and I feel like I'm missing something. I think that's it. So what do you think, Molly? That's your first taste of the inside of the book. So I love what, it. What do you think? Sounds like, awesome. Proud to be part of this? Absolutely. Good, because it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's right. It's too, you've got to change all your stuff, because I know where to find you. <laughs> You're in it for years. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, you shall meet all these people after making their cover. I find that amusing. Um, so awesome. So Jen, um, congratulations on this. Is this your first novel novel? This, this is my first published novel novel. <gasps> oh, congratulations. Yay, debut novel, Jen Bear. I'm going to start writing that on everything. Good. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Gotten lots of short stories out there, but I've not had a novel published yet. So this was, this was a big bite to be like, here's, you know, a couple thousand years of history. Learn about that and write something in this world. So uh, <laughs> it's been a really fun playground to play in. I love it. So exciting. So excited. Okay. So Jen, now that you have your first debut novel coming out July 25th, by the way, right here on Twitch, please come to the live launch. We will give away signed copies. So that will be fun. Um, but where can fans find you and your work? Um, everything is listed on my website, jenbear.com. You can also find me on Amazon. If you search for my name, Jen Bear, it will come up. I've got an author page on there. Um, yeah. So awesome. Awesome. Most of my works on Cursed Dragon Ship Publishing, because all of your anthologies over the past mm -hmm. or so I've been in. And then there's this. Yeah, we were, I was writing up because we were just at a convention. So I was writing up on each anthology, which of the authors that, that are signed with us are also in the anthology. And I was like, man, Jen's in a lot more of these than I remembered. <laughs> you're in, the, you're like in all of them. You're awesome. Um, and Molly, when people are looking for an amazing uh, cover mm -hmm. artist, where do they go? Uh, you can go to my website, which is wegotyoucoveredbookdesign.com. I also have a group on Facebook where I tend to post my availability on that. It's same name, We Got You Covered Book Design, and I'm also on Instagram at the same name. <laughs> Excellent. We'll have to make sure I'm following you. So fantastic. <laughs> so thank you so much, everyone. And we will see you um, on July 25th for this launch. So I can't wait. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you then. <laughs> Yes. <laughs>